tablets. Always on, always on you, always connected. They are experiences as much as devices, almost vanishing between the user and their media. They are the future of being connected. A really thin, sleek design. It doesn't fit in your hand, but it does fit in every consumer's life. Television, now also becoming connected, separating the content we call television from the device we call television, and in the process, rewriting the rules of watching with consumer choice, voice, and control. the pursuit of a few hackers, the connected car breaks more rules than perhaps any other new technology. And I like to think of the vehicle as being the ultimate mobile device. Major automakers and media firms understand the vehicle is a largely untapped source of millions of new user places. Completing the circle with mobile devices and connected TV to give users what they want, where they want it, when they want it. And when done well, always in context. None of the platforms that come after the computer are without a few hurdles and many questions. But consumers will do what they've always done. Discover something new at CNET and decide what works for them. Okay, so I think you saw four major buckets of technology go by there. Three of the four are very key to radio. That would be the tablet, the smartphone, we have the connected car. The connected TV is a little different space. If you want to know more about that, just peripherally, or if it's part of your group, I'll be doing a super session uh, about the 2 o'clock hour where I'm going to dive into connected and 3D TV. But let's stay and focus on the ones that are really important to radio. Of course, the tablet is the one that you think of iPad. When I say tablet, 82% of consumers think iPad. That's just how the numbers are going. And that will continue for another year or two with a dominant uh, sort of connection between the category and that one product from Apple. That's disturbing because a single product from a single company does not the category make. So the good news is, here come the very credible competitors now. You may be familiar with the Motorola Zoom. This runs the Android operating system like a lot of your smartphones do. That's good because Android is already in consumers' minds. They already understand what it is, how it works. They have a good feeling about it. It's grown really well. It's available in many carriers and many handsets. So that vectors them into sampling. We all know about sampling in this business. And this is an important thing for new technologies. Because tech companies, before they can sell you a tablet or a phone or a connected car, they have to sell confidence first. Technology is a lot about very new, unfamiliar things. So the confidence has to be there. So having Android out there helps to build confidence. It isn't just an Apple thing now. We all, in the biz, in our audiences, realize it's a major new trend in our lives. That's important. Also, watch what's happening with HP's Web OS. This one is coming up. It's uh, much less known to consumers right now. It descends from the former Palm operating system. And again, this is going to be on tablets and smartphones. Who knows, potentially in cars. They'll be putting it on computers, on printers, maybe on set-top boxes for televisions. I like seeing these ecosystems happen because these build broader bases for all of us to put our radio content on, and it's less niche stuff we have to explain because we're not in the business of, uh, business of explaining technology. That's not what we do. We tell great stories, we make it transparent, intimate, intuitive, local, live, personal. That's what radio is all about. Those are tremendous attributes to have come on new platforms. And the last one I point you to right now is the BlackBerry Playbook. Again, tapping to another market. Those who are tied to Blackberries, use them every day for work, enormous audience, very influential, very desirable audience, of course, business oriented. So all these tablets are building up the category in the minds of our advertisers and of our users. And these very powerful companies going out there and they're doing a lot of the heavy lifting of explaining, educating, and selling confidence to the users that a new future is there. And all of these are great platforms for radio. Now, the tablets are going mainstream, as you can imagine. You've seen and heard all the hype. The numbers, I want to give you a little reality check. They're not going to blot out the sun. Not everyone's going to carry a tablet the next year or two. These are the numbers, the red bars I would take a look at. A little hard to read the, the numbers there, but by uh, 2015, Indications are, according to Forrester Research, maybe 82, I'd rather that up, maybe 100 million people in the U.S. will have a tablet. That's uh, maybe 40% of the internet broadband population, if you want to look at it that way. Big, big number, but it's also not the only device anyone's going to use in the future. I'd just like to give you a reality check on these things. Smartphones, as you know, are the most mainstream of our new mobile digital devices. They are the ones in all these different flavors, all these different types, that all can do radio so well do video well, but I would argue they're not an immersive experience. Tablets do video much better, because tablets fill your field of view. Tablets give you a place to put your hand where you can really get into the content. I don't think of these as being great immersive video devices, great immersive audio devices, because they're always with you, just like radio. The habit maps 
to the portability of the device. Now, phones have taken over in an interesting way. This happened last quarter, Q4 of 2010, about three quarters ahead of time. This is the sales of smartphones worldwide, 100.9 million of them in just the quarter, up 87% over the quarter a year ago. Doesn't mean anything in itself until I show you this bar. This is the sales of personal computers in that same quarter. For the first time, smartphones outsold PCs. This is part of the after the PC era. It's not a theory. It's here now and it's happening. So start thinking very broadly. When you think digital, get that desktop computer, get that Mac laptop out of your mind or push it to the side and make room for these other devices. They're no longer a niche by any stretch. Just for comparison, here's tablets for all of 2010. Just 18 million were sold. Again, a number that is going to grow dramatically to maybe 45 to 60 million this year. The, the numbers are a little bit all over the road. And for comparison on that, here are e-readers, the Kindles, the Nooks, and all of those. Again, for the year, 12 million sold. That will not become a major category in and of itself. The tablet is, I believe, for most people, a good enough reader that it will keep that reader column, just for reference, kind of at a relatively low level. It's a dedicated audience, not really a radio-specific device, of course. Here's the way the smartphones are going to sell into the market, and I promise you I won't get you with any more graphs after this. Maybe one more. Uh, 110 million smartphones for your installed base. This is U.S. only. Again, a conservative estimate. I'd round that up by maybe 15, 20 percent, but again, a lot of people in your market are not going to carry a smartphone even by 2015. So it's the same story as tablets. Really big, major trend. If it's 40 percent of your audience, it's probably your best 40 percent, but it's not going to be the only phone anybody has. Bear that in mind as you do programs for loyalty, for engagement, what have you. A lot of folks have a phone that'll just text that has a grayscale screen that doesn't have a full QWERTY keyboard. I want you to be broad-minded about the way the devices are coming. The new ones also have some old variants that will be out there for quite a while. It's important for your strategy. The smartphone is the most important thing to watch in what we call this area of convergence. You have the iPod Nano. This will start to decline and will be eclipsed by smartphones, even from Apple itself, not to mention from other makers, and that will go into the smartphone. Look what else the smartphone subsumes within to itself. Take GPS navigation devices. These are forecast to have like a 50% drop in sales over the next few years. They'll be subsumed into the smartphone because most people don't use GPS now that often. The phone's good enough. And just today, we heard that Cisco has pulled the plug on the Flip division, which made the iconic Flip video camera. That now is a high-def 1080p camera in the phone. So your users, your listeners, all of their media experiences, navigation, communication, information, entertainment, are all going into the smartphone. If you have to focus on one device, focus on that. The tablet is rich. I would argue that perhaps it's a somewhat more optimized device for our friends on the broadcast video side, on the television side. Smartphones are so beautiful for radio in that they are portable, they're personal, they're all those things that radio has always been. It's important to bear that in mind. And the convergence here is partly because good enough is good enough. For a lot of folks, they don't need a perfect individual device, an ideal GPS nav, a perfect MP3 player. You can put them all together into one, and the smartphone does it pretty well. Plus, they're all about being connected and mobile. And of course, being subsidized is great. Smartphones are always subsidized for the most part. Other products that you can use to listen to streaming radio, like a, a connected car or a tablet, typically isn't. You've got to bear the full freight yourself. And people are used to radio being a very cost-effective experience technically free for the experience with a modest hardware cost. So smartphone also maps to that, I would say, psychologically. You hear about the cloud a lot. I want to give you a couple notes on that. The cloud is simply the internet. When you hear someone say, I'm going to put something in the cloud or we're going to host music in the cloud, it just means they're going to put it on servers, computers, that are on the internet that you can reach from pretty much any device with an app or a web browser. The big one that made a lot of news lately was, of course, the Amazon Cloud Drive. It lets you take all the music you have, your MP3 files and your AAC files that you may have purchased from iTunes, and upload them, send them up one time to app to Amazon, and then from any device you have, tablet, phone, future connected car, anything, you can play that music, stream it to yourself. You put your collection in one place, it becomes the hub, and wherever you go, there's a spoke to where you are, and you just have your music everywhere. It's important to think about it because you can see it immediately as a competitor to radio, but you can also see where it's helping to build this idea of everywhere, all the time, on every device. So it's, uh, it's co-opetition, as we say in the biz. Apple will soon announce something similar. This isn't it, but it's iDisc. It's a similar type of platform. And Google's going to go the same way as well. So this is the next big trend. You've been aware of Pandora and services like that. The next big wave is cloud. So as opposed to having a customized station that's trying to guess what I like, 
or a locker of music that I might like or might not, now it's my music is in that locker on the cloud. This is really getting it focused. But I'll tell you, at the same time, that also is going to leave an appetite for discovery unsatiated that radio does so well. So double down on your ability to expose and discover new artists if you're in a music format. And of course, make sure that you realize this doesn't speak to the spoken word formats. This is not about news talk, obviously. You can't upload a news talk show and have it be fresh the next day or the next month. So cloud is an important idea for consumers. I think it's gonna be very strong. It's sort of the next follow-on to this Pandora model that we've all been working uh, around and with and trying to figure out in our business and in other businesses. I wanna clarify 4G, you hear a lot about this. It's gonna be a big smartphone technology, so it'll be important to radio. This is the idea of kind of like cable versus DSL. It's two ways of doing the same thing. Really fast wireless to your smartphone or your tablet in some cases. And the idea is that it's as fast or faster than what you have at home. Here are the speeds. You don't know what, you know, necessarily you have to know what megabits are, uh, are rated to versus your home connection, but those are speeds that are six to eight to ten times faster than what people have in their home connection. Very high speed connectivity via wireless. This flavor called LTE is being used by Verizon, AT&T, and presumably T-Mobile when that deal goes through, which most think it will. On the other hand, we have WiMAX. Notice it's technically a little better, if you want to put it that way, faster certainly, but it's only Sprint among the major national carriers in the United States that are embracing that technology. But these will be the two that we're going to be watching in the next year or two, and I say two years. 2011 is a rollout year for 4G. Get the handsets out there, get the networks fully built out, get it available in every market, which right now it most certainly is not on these carriers. And then 2012, you'll see the mainstream here. When a significant portion of your users are going to have these phones, it'll be working in their network, in their area, in their market. I bring this up for radio because when you have a fast connection to your phone, it's not just about streaming video, which people think right away, it's also about everything working really well. You have more overhead, because your phone or your tablet is doing a lot all the time, it needs a bigger pipeline from the cloud, if you will, to allow all of its media experiences to happen. As you put up apps, let's say, that stream radio in higher and higher fidelity and offer visual content, whether it's album art or offers or what have you, you want to see consumers moving to 4G. It'll work better, it won't hiccup and pause and stop and start and have all kinds of problems. So it's important to watch 4G even from an audio medium perspective. Now the most exciting part I think for radio is the connected car. If you've uh, seen me speak uh, here at NAB or at some other, uh, other NAB events for the last few years, you know I keep banging this drum and maybe you're starting to think, all right, maybe he's crazy. The connected car is not really coming. Well, it's here. I was right. Um, <laughs> It's good news because the car, as we know, is this enormous piece of the radio listening habits. Uh, it's also one that's been a completely different world. I wouldn't call it a digital ghetto, but it's a digital island. When we leave our home, we kind of go to a different set of media experiences. We leave a lot of rich media. All those screens we have in our lives goes down to maybe a seven inch screen that doesn't show the stuff we want to see. It shows, you know, navigation or maybe some big radio buttons, but it's not rich and interactive like we're used to. Our media choices drop down. Maybe I've been listening and interacting with your radio website. Now I go, I listen to just the radio signal. Even that's a narrowing of the experience I just had with your property. The car needs to be on the same level and have the same uh, pipeline with, if you will, as all my other experiences. The, con the connected car gets us there. Ford, of course, was first out of the gate with this, with Ford Sync. I trust you all are familiar with this. It's a tremendous system. Um, there's also uh, the Komodo console, a new product coming out from an Israeli company that will give you this kind of, look at that, it looks like a, a car-optimized tablet that works with any vehicle. It'll be paid strictly by monthly fees, no cost for the hardware, still coming to market. BMW Connected Drive, I'll show you in a moment, they're way out in front. Toyota Entune is going to be likely an earth shaker because they have got this coming out in a huge number of their cars this summer, starting with the new Camry, which as you know is a heavy mainstream model, it can really build awareness. Same goes for Chevy. They have MyLink now, which is going to compete head-on with Ford Sync. I mean, look at the number of car platforms. Hyundai? Don't even turn your back on Hyundai these days. They can barely hit a, hit a single. It's like, uh, it, it's, it's like home runs right and left for those guys in the market. So this is an amazing number of car makers that are coming out right now saying, yep, yeah, we're doing connected. We're bringing that experience from your other connected media to our cars, and it's not weird, and it's not geeky, and it's not niche. Let me show you a quick video here of how this BMW connected drive technology works. Again, this is in real cars right now in the showrooms. The new X3 and the Hybrid 7 I've both tested that have this in it. Let's give this a quick look. This is two videos mashed together, so just kind of watch what happens. That's something new you haven't seen on iDrive before. Facebook 
Twitter, and web radio functionality tethered through an iPhone app suite. Okay, here's my iPhone docked in my BMW cradle right here. There's the actual phone part of this app's platform, BMW Connected. I press that, and that's going to bring up, first of all, a confirmation <coughs> screen telling me I'm connected. It transfers all of the interface from the phone to the dash. It's safer, and it's also a higher performance media interface. Check it out. If I go to Facebook, here comes an update screen. This is the client called Connected Drive Geneva. If I drop down to Twitter, here come tweets. Again, they're in German. I'm not going to rattle those off to you. Text to speech to hear those. And I've got web radio here. Again, configured through your iPhone app or future other smartphone platforms to plug in the stations you want to have in there. Built in wireless internet in the car. And that's a European market thing. We've not seen that yet on a BMW, though Audi's A8 is getting there closely. Now, BMW calls this technology BMW Plugin. That's their wrapper, if you will, for Apple's iPod Out technology. So this is based on a more or less standard set of concierge service you can call. You've got roadside assistance, but this is something new. Here's BMW Search. When you dig into that, you get some internet services. You've got a built-in cellular radio in the car. Once you get into it, you've got this home screen. You've got a bunch of business quotes on the top. They know who the 7 Series buyer is. News will let you get some very simple news headlines, but not to read them, because that's a little dangerous. It lets you have them read to you, kind of like a really shabby podcast. But the most interesting tool here is the first one, business search. This is getting into the future, how navigation systems and communication are going to work. I can look up whatever I'm interested in, and once you find what you're looking for, this is really a quick way to get there. Click once, click again for start guide. You can also start make a phone call from that results screen you see there. The web radio stations can be programmed via the iPhone or on the screen itself of the car, so you can punch in the actual web URL, store that as a streaming station you want to listen to. So we're starting to make the bridge here. BMW is way out on front on this technology. Uh, if you haven't taken a look at it, talk to one of the dealers in your area. If they're not already one of your advertisers, go down and say hi. Nice sort of a hi-hello discussion point, if nothing else, and say, I want to see how this works. Demo this for me. Uh, I'd also encourage you to look at Toyota Entune. Um, you can find a video on this over at our uh, CNECTV.com website. I'll take you through about a six-minute uh, video there if you want to take a look at it. And it will show you how um, it's got five major apps in there. It's got iHeartRadio from Clear Channel, Pandora Streaming, Bing Search, but again, tailored for in-car use, MovieTickets.com, which is like Fandango, and also Open Table Restaurant Reservations, all on the screen through the smartphone. The BMWs have their own internet radio built into the dash. In fact, since I filmed the first part of the BMW video where I said they didn't have that in the U.S. yet, the built-in internet right in the car, they have since revved that into their U.S. model. So even if you don't even own a cell phone, these BMW models you buy today have built-in wireless internet in them. They get on the air. They are, in and of themselves, as uh, Paul, the CTO of Ford, said there, they are the ultimate rolling consumer electronics device. Let me show you a couple things, uh, some tools for radio, just to throw a few out there. It's by no means a definitive list, but three that have come to my mind as I've been working through some, uh, some various workups and talking to some different groups. Apps should be obvious. This is an important one to approach either individually or with your group. The app is important because if you leave the user to use their smartphone, as I think is really the best analog for a radio listening experience, and go to a website, that's going to be a very messy, busy, tight resolution experience. Finding the listen button, just that simple, is going to be hard. There may be a bunch of confirmations they have to click on. Consider spending some resources on an app. Train it out with a developer, work through your station group, wherever you've got to find the resources. It's very important because an app can sit in the background, keep streaming, do all the stuff that radio does. That's one to consider. Another one, a company called Zoom does short codes. It's a call, it's not a text, and it works on all carriers as opposed to just one, which has so often been the case. So you could have, you know, we use Star Star Scenic, you could have Star Star Your Call Letters. And it can do anything when you call. It can send something. It can send an advertiser's offer. It can send a PDF to the phone, a link to act on an advertiser's offer, or something to do with your station, or it can be a vote. Just about anything you can imagine. It can be done through a short code, as they call them. And the third one, of course, you probably know about QR codes. These are uh, little things you scan with the camera on your smartphone. And it will, again, give you an interactive experience right off the bat. Working with your advertisers to have them put these on store kiosks, in the creative they send out, the flyers, the newspaper ads, all the printed media that they do, or even on screen, you can scan these on the screen, will allow them to create offers, or you can create them for them, that will go back to your website. 
and let that interactivity follow, the back channel, whatever you want to call it, the down funnel. Once awareness has happened, if you want someone to act on an offer, this allows them to have a quick and easy interactivity. Well, let me go with one last thought here about social media. This is an interesting uh, survey that came out about how people are reporting the increasing impact of various kinds of referrals, encouraging them to buy something, experience it, take advantage of it, from different media. Uh, the growth is uh, sort of an inverse of the personnel connection. You can see here, this is the percent change folks are reporting. Say, so, yes, uh, TV made a little bit of an impact, increased impact on me. Newspaper, radio, pretty healthy. Blogs and the social media above that, of course, are the big numbers, with Facebook and social networks being the biggest growth of referral impact on my behavior. But notice what's happening here. This is the exact order, or the inverse order, of how personal these platforms are. Social network at the top, that's Facebook. Those are my friends. I know all those people. Twitter is kind of the second line there, and it's all Twitter. I know some of them, and I follow a lot of folks I don't know. Blogs, I probably don't know the bloggers that I read and follow, uh, maybe one or two. And then you get to radio, I feel like I know them. Radio is the hot medium compared to radio, uh, to newspaper and television, which of course have a significant drop off in this personal affect. Take advantage of the fact that radio can go up on this scale. And the way that that happens is by very simply putting grist in the mill, as I like to say, when people tweet, when they like, when they post to their Facebook wall, when they do any of those behaviors, we're in the era of re. We're re-something all the time. Retweeting, reposting, liking, approving. This is time for radio to get in there and be part of the conversation by taking opinions and stands outside of the air signal. Make sure your jocks, your talent, your talk host, your promotions team, your general manager, your sales staff, anybody who's got something to say is out there saying it through the station's social media channels because your listeners will read that and that'll make you part of the conversation. You can't bring them to your site and say, hey, let's have a forum chat here on kxxx.com about our jump ball of the day. You may have noticed that doesn't really work. They have social networks. Your site is not one of them. I'm sorry to say it, but that's actually good news because there are much bigger social networks that you need to get in front of, get in front of a parade Go try and build one, much more efficient, and that means give people something to react to. Give your listeners something to react to. It's a, a key point that I rolled out to marketers all over the country as I kind of explain social media to them, and it's, it's really quite simple. Your stations have a lot to say. They're factories of statements. Put them out there for people to react to, positive or negative. So key points I want to leave you with. And I'm blown through a lot here. There's a, you know, we could do a day on this entire topic, but number one, we're in the after the PC era. Think broadly about digital devices now. Don't just envision the browser or computer-based technology anymore. Ecosystems are happening. Tablets are a family. Smartphones are a revolution. The computer is by no means going away, and connected cars, plural, are bubbling up to give us behaviors that will be consistent, gutter to gutter, across our listeners' lives. Transparent, and intimate, and intuitive. If we weren't talking about this, we'd be talking about a whole different topic. This is the whole point here. If that wasn't getting done, we wouldn't need tablets or smartphones, to be honest. That's what they do better than computers. So key in on that. And notice, that's basically describing radio. Unlocking new user places. Your radio content can be rich anywhere on a mobile device. And radio can go anywhere now. It doesn't need to just be at work on that table radio or in dash in the car. Now the radio's with them. But think streaming. Think streaming at least as much as thinking FM chips in those, in those mobile devices. Because they're already streaming. Stay in the behavior that they're working on. Leverage that. And the next big wave is going to be in car. This is a major, major unlock for the digital experience to go wall to wall. This is the birthright of radio. Make sure that you're spending time and resources as you can on this. Because that's where radio is going to have its next great renaissance. The car has always been very strong. And now we're seeing the car become part of the rest of our digital lives in a rich way. So thank you very much. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to send me an email. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, I kind of have little bursts about this stuff from time to time. Thanks so much, everybody. <laughs>